In the previous three, two videos, we've learned how to stack convolutional layers and pooling layers together to build a convolutional base. In this video, let's learn how we can connect the output from the convolutional base to a shallow neural network for classifications and predictions. Let's go ahead and get started. Once the model has learned the features, it's time for us to flatten the final feature map and then fit it to a new network and for classifications purpose. However, because the dense layers take the vectors as an input instead of these feature maps, normally is a 3D tensor. Therefore, a flattened layer will, will be needed to use that to convert the data into a one-dimensional array that is these vectors for inputting it to the next layer, for inputting it to the shallow neural network. Uh, here is an example. Say, for example, we have a three by three image matrix. We we are going. What we can do is that we use a flattened layers to flatten it to a nine by one vector. So the whole concept here is that we use a flattened layers to connect the three D final to to connect to the three D final feature maps to and then fit it into a new network. Again, this flattened layer will not learn anything. Now let's take a look on the example. Um, again, we are using this setup. So we have a features learning convolutional base, and then after that, we would like to use a flattened layers to convert the input image features uh, to, to convert the feature maps into a vector, and then fit this vector into a deep shallow neural network for classifications. First thing first, we need to import the sequential model, and of course, we want to import the convolutional 2D maximum pulling 2D and also the threaten layers and as well as the dense layer for the deep for the shallow neural network. Now let's run this cell. Again what we are doing what we are doing is like uh, what we've done before. So we have a 32 by 32 RGB image. We we are going to create a 64 uh, filters and feed by three kernels and shift uh, one pixel at a time and we would like to make sure that the output and input have the same size so we are using a padding equals to same to the same and then for the activation functions we're going to use the value and also we would like because this is the first layer we need to specify the input shapes that is 32 by 32 by 3 because of the free because of the rgb channel so this is the first convolutional 2D. And then right after that, just like what we've done before, we would like to add a maximum pooling layers to reduce the number of the dimensions and by two. So in that case, we try to, uh, we, we are going to add a maximum pooling layer with filters e uh, equals to two by two, and then stripes equals to two by two. And also, and of course, because we want to reduce the output size, we are going to use a padding equals to valid instead of the same. Now, if I run this cell, you can see that um, the input image is 32 by 32, and then the output is a 32 by 32 by 64 because you, we used it the same paddings. So this is a 32 by 32. And then because we used it, the filters equals to 64, we have 64 channels at the last parameters here. And for convolution 2D, um, it has more than one, around 1,700 parameters because it's learning, of course. And however, because for the pooling study, because it does not learn anything, so there's no parameters. What I what we really want to do with the to with by this maximum pooling is to reduce the number of this output size. In that case, because we use a pool pool size two by two stripes equals to two by twos, we can reduce it by a factor of two. Now we just form a very, very simple convolutional base um, to create that feature maps. 
Now we have this feature map that is equals to 16 by 16 by 64. Because in that case, we want to output it uh, into a single features vectors. In, the case, in this case, we want to add a flatten layer here. Now, if I add the flatten layers, again, you can see because you can see that because we these layers does not learn anything, so there's no parameters over here. However, it will just convert these um, three by uh, sixty by sixty by sixty four output into a single long feature vector for further input for to the to further in, further input to the final uh, final shallow uh, neural network. To complete the models, finally we can add one one or more uh, dense layers to these uh, flattened layers to perform the classifications or the predictions. So again, uh, I'm not going to repeat this, but I will just run this cell, run this cell, and everything is the same as what I've just mentioned. And because I also add a flattened layer uh, here, you can see that the you can see that the first two layer is to form the feature maps output. And then with that feature maps output, we are going to convert it into a single vector with the flattened layer. And finally, of course, we can add two dense layers right after these flattened layers to form a shallow neural network to perform the classifications or the predictions. And for this case, we are performing the classifications. So because we are using a activation soft max functions to match what, of what we've done in our previous example. That's it for this videos and course. I hope you enjoyed it. In this course, we understand the entire process of on building a convolutional neural network models. We also cover the details of the convolutional layers and pooling layers and how to stack these layers together to create a feature maps for classifications or predictions. In the next course, we will learn another useful types of neural network, which is recurrent neural network. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.